All right, so as we take a look here at uh, sections 2, 4, and 2, 5, uh, we've already added and subtracted real numbers. We're going to take a look at multiplying and dividing real numbers here uh, in these two sections. So um, just real quick reminder on how to multiply real numbers. Um, and some of you were getting this confused when we were adding and subtracting. Remember, a negative number times another negative number will get yield a positive number. Okay. Clearly, when you multiply two positive numbers, that number is going to be positive. And then uh, the only other scenario is if the two signs are different. So if you're multiplying a negative number uh, times a positive number, well, then that product will always be negative. Okay. So again, I, I'm pretty sure you're already familiar with this, but just in case, uh, a little refresher there. So You'll see in example number one here, we have four different problems, um, and your task is to multiply without a calculator, okay? So in part A here, we're looking, first of all, we're multiplying two negative numbers, uh, and we said just a minute ago that anytime you're multiplying two negatives, your answer is clearly going to be positive, and so negative eight times negative six is going to yield a product of, neg uh, of, I'm sorry, of positive 48. Uh, part B. We have three different numbers we're multiplying, and so what you can do is just kind of look at this in two parts. Group the first two numbers together first, so you have negative 2 times positive 3.5. And when I look at that product, again, it's a positive number times a negative, so I have a negative, and then 2 times 3.5 is 7. And then we can't forget about the negative 4 there on the end, so we have negative 7 times negative 4 now. Negative times a negative is a positive, 7 times 4 is positive 28. Uh, part C here, we have fractions involved now, and again, I know some of you are not real confident with fractions, but uh, the goal is to kind of get you guys a little bit more comfortable uh, and not so um, worrisome, I suppose, when it comes to using fractions. So uh, you have three numbers again. Group the first two together. You have one-fourth times negative 12. A positive and a negative is going to yield a negative product. And then one-fourth times 12, remember, little side note here, let me erase this and then uh, just give you a quick refresher here. So if I have one fourth times negative twelve, you can think of negative twelve as being over one, and then you just multiply straight across. So you have negative twelve over four, and negative twelve over four is going to simplify down to negative three. So one fourth times negative twelve is negative three. So I have negative three times positive three, which is going to yield a product of negative nine. And uh, part D, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys work through that on your own here. Uh, you know, if, if you want to pause the video now, do that. If you want to just go back and revisit it later, do that. Uh, and if you have issues with it, uh, just bring that, have that ready tomorrow uh, as we get going in class. All right, next thing we're going to do is take a look at some different properties. Uh, and hopefully you'll start to see how and when to use these different properties as we look at different examples. So uh, let's get this right. All right, so the first one is commutative. Okay, the commutative property is pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to just kind of summarize these property properties. This means order doesn't matter. Okay, so in other words, if you take three numbers, you can multiply those three numbers in any order you want, and you're going to end up with the same product. It's not going to change anything. All right, uh, the associative property says... If you're multiplying three numbers together or more, you can group them any way you'd like. Okay, so grouping doesn't matter when you're multiplying. As long as that's all you're doing is multiplying, it won't matter. Okay, uh, the identity property, okay, all that means is that anytime you multiply a number by one, you end up with that number. Okay, um, so multiply by one gives you your number okay so it's not going to change anything I think that's pretty easy to understand um, the property of zero clearly hopefully at this stage of the game you know that anything multiplied by zero is always going to be zero so multiplying by zero always equals zero and the property of negative 1 multiplying by negative 1 just simply gives you the opposite of a number. Okay, So property of negative 1 gives you the opposite of the number. Okay, um, The multiplicative identity, Okay, in other words, the thing that you can multiply by to get the number you start with is clearly just 1. Okay, So the mul multiplicative identity is the number 1. Anything times 1 is itself. Um, 
and so uh, that's all we're looking at there. Okay, uh, you'll notice that the multiplicative identity is the same as the identity property. Okay, it's the same as the identity property. Multiply by one, and you get your number. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at multiplying here. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So as we take a look at uh, example number two, we're going to use these properties now. Okay, so um, you'll notice we have we have parentheses here. Okay, so order of operations would dictate do things inside the parentheses first. So you have negative two times negative 0.5 times c is just going to be negative 0.5 c. Okay. Uh, and then finally, you have negative 2 times negative 0.5c. Negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 0.5 is just 1, so the answer here would just be c. Okay, And, uh, and so that's all we're looking at there. Uh, Justification-wise, you know, this would be order of operations. Okay, Order of operations. And the last one is just multiplication property. Okay, Multiplying two uh, real numbers. The next property we're going to take a look at and spend a little bit of time on is the distributive property. Again, probably something that you are already familiar with. Hopefully, you're really comfortable with it. Uh, that is the hope anyway. So when we look at the distributive property, remember, if you're multiplying, and this only works for multiplication, not with exponents, only multiplying. I have a 3 out in front and x plus 6 inside the parentheses, so I can simplify this by taking the 3 to both guys inside, and you end up with 3x plus 18. Okay. In part B, just because the n's on the other side doesn't change anything, it still has to go to both things. n times n is n squared, and then 5 times n is just 5n. All right. It's just going to both guys inside. So now I have negative 4 that I'm distributing. Negative 4 and y makes negative 4y. Negative 4 and negative 2 makes positive 8. Okay. And then part D here, 9 goes to the 8 and the negative x. So I have 72 minus... 9x, all right, and then finally part E here, let me go ahead and erase so I can scroll over, so for part E, all right, notice we're just distributing a negative sign, so you can think of this thing, that's really just distributing negative 1, so it's got to go to both guys inside, negative 1 times 3y is negative 3y, negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9, and so that would be our product there, uh, or our, I shouldn't say product, but our simplified version using distributive property. So again, there's six different properties here in this section regarding multiplication of real numbers, and uh, the hope is that you are pretty confident in using all of them. All right, just some things that as we get going here and start solving linear equations and, and quadratics and things like that, um, I want you to be familiar with just terminology, okay? And so when we look at this expression here, negative 2x minus 8 plus 6x plus 5, okay, each individual item, okay, or each individual um, piece is called a term, okay? So the terms are going to be negative 2x, the negative 8, positive 6x, and positive 5. Okay, those would be the terms of your expression. All right, the coefficients now are the guys out in front of your variables. Okay, so the coefficients here would be negative 2 and positive 6. Your constant term is the thing without a variable. Okay, so we have two of them. We have the constant term of negative 8 and a constant term of positive 5. Clearly, we could combine like terms to just give us one constant term. And then when we talk about like terms, let me go ahead and erase here now that I have all these arrows drawn. Um, when we talk about like terms, that means you have the same exact variable. Okay, so obviously, when we're looking at this particular expression, negative 2x and positive 6 are like terms, and then negative 8 and positive 5 would also be like terms because they're constants. There is no variable on either one. So when we're simplifying, okay, we're going to apply these properties, and then we're going to combine like terms. Okay, Combine like terms. Again, uh, hopefully this is just review for you, and you're just kind of buzzing through these notes, and you're picking up on everything pretty quickly. So uh, example 4, part A. All right, I'm going to have to apply a couple properties here. The first one is distributive property. Okay, 
Um, what I would do is I would change this to plus a negative 2. That way you know you're distributing a negative 2. A lot of people uh, miss that step. And so the first guy becomes 30 plus 5n plus, now I distribute negative 2. Negative 2 and n makes negative 2n. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then finally, I'm just going to combine like terms. Okay, So I have 5n and negative 2n, which makes 3n. And then I have 30 and 4, which is just 34. All right, so apply any properties that you see. And then at the very end, just combine all of your like terms. Combine your constants and combine all of the expressions or the terms uh, that have the same variable. All right, part B here. Again, distribute this 4 first. So I have 12x minus 8 plus x. Combine your like terms. There's only two of them, 12x and x. Makes 13x minus 8. Part C, again, change this to plus a negative 2 just to make sure that you're um, aware of what's going on here. So you have a 5 out in front plus distribute negative 2. So you have negative 2x and then negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14. Forgot the x there. Combine your like terms. The only like terms are your 5 and your 14. So you have 19 minus 2x. And then finally, part D. I'm just going to erase here to give myself a little bit more room uh, to work with. So for part D, again, distribute first. Change that to plus a negative and distribute. So I have 4n plus 36 plus negative 6 minus 3n or plus negative 3n. That's fine, however you want to think about that. Um, combine your like terms. 4n and 3n makes 1n, or negative 3n, I should say. And then 36 plus negative 6 is positive 30. And so that's the expression that you'd be left with after you simplify uh, using distributive property and then obviously combining like terms. All right. And then finally, uh, last two examples here. Example five, um, your daily workout plan involves a total of 50 minutes of running and swimming. You burn 15 calories. Let me scroll over here to make sure we can read the whole thing. Um, per minute when you run and nine calories per minute when you swim. Let R be the number of minutes that you run. Find the number of calories you burn in uh, your 50-minute workout if you run for 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, obviously a, a word problem, you have to identify different variables and then uh, set up and solve, okay? So we know that we have a total of 50 minutes, okay? And we know that we spent 20 of those minutes uh, running, okay? So R is 20. And so if R is 20, then what that means is that we spent 30 minutes swimming, okay? Now we know that we burn 15 calories per minute when we run, so to... to kind of write an expression there, okay, um, I ran for 20 minutes times 15 calories per minute, okay, plus I know I swam for 30 minutes, and I know that I'm, I am burning 9 calories per minute when I swim, and so now when I simplify this Okay, over the course of this 50-minute workout, 20 times 15 is 300, and 30 times 9 is 270, and so you would burn 570 calories in this workout. All right, and then finally, the last part is just getting you comfortable with um, area and perimeter and leaving answers as expressions and not always getting an exact answer um, but just giving me an expression, okay? So for example number six, it says find expressions or write expressions that represent the perimeter and area of the figure. So perimeter, hopefully you know, just means add up all your sides. So 2.1 plus x plus 0 0.06 plus 2.1 plus x plus, uh, I'm sorry, x plus 0 0.06, right? And then you just simplify that by combining like terms. So P equals, there's two X's, all right? And then I got to take 2.1 and 0.06, that's 2.16, and then just double that, okay? So you end up at 4.32 as the expression for your perimeter. And then we're going to do the same thing for area, but clearly we're going to uh, do something a little bit different. To find the area of a rectangle, you multiply the base times the height or length times the width. So the area is found by doing 2.1 times x plus 0.06, all 
All right, and that's the area. And so when I do this, I could leave it like that, or you know, I could I could distribute this. Uh, it's not really going to matter. Um, it'd be easier just to leave it like this. If I distribute, I'd end up with 2.1x plus, and then I have 2.1, 2.1 times 0.06. So 2.1 times 0.06 would give you 0.126. That would be a, an alternative way of expressing the area of this rectangle. So again, the assumption is the reason we're combining all these sections is that we feel like you guys ha already have a pretty good grasp on it. If there are misconceptions or maybe something is difficult for you, make sure you have questions ready to go tomorrow, and we'll make sure that we clarify before we move forward.